it's a super interesting question because I think um, intermediate, we're going to have a challenge uh, with with uh, with energy as we we're transfer uh, trans. Um, we're transforming our way out of coal, uh, coal, uh, natural gas, and, and oil, which all gives a very, very sustainable uh, energy production or uh, stable. And, and we're moving into to solar and wind that, that is very much fluctuating. Well, in order for, for our society to, to, to do that transformation, um, we're going to need to install um, a lot of energy storage. Um, and, and, and it's going to be a little bit of a, of a challenging time. Uh, we're also facing out, like in Sweden, we're facing out the nuclear. Uh, Is that smart to phase out nuclear? Isn't nuclear safe and efficient and manageable? Would you get rid of nuclear this early or, or is it wise? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, it's... It's it's a super good good question and it's a very political question. That's why I want to answer. I, you know, it, yeah. I, I think it, I think it's nuclear in this part of the world. The world is safe. Um, I think there is there is probably an end of life of reactors. Uh, the question is is it 30, 40, 50, or 60 years uh, where where those reactors needs to be shut down and, and and be replaced? And I think. I think it's probably possible to, to run them a little bit longer than, than, uh, than what we do now. Um, and uh, it's going to be a challenge for, because, for example, Sweden, uh, we have said that we want to be uh, uh, carbon neutral in 25 years. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to get rid of all oil in, uh, in transportation, um, and, and which means a lot of electric vehicles maybe a little bit hydrogen, but most electrical uh, vehicles. And, and those needs electricity, so we, we're probably going to need, um, give or take, 20-25% more electricity generation than what we have today uh, in, in order to support that fleet of, of electric uh, uh, vehicles. And in, in that perspective, to phase out uh, the nuclear... It makes uh, no sense. It's, it's stupid. Maybe not super good. It's stupid, isn't it? It's an emotional decision people are making because of Fukushima, because of Chernobyl. But those, if you look at those situations, those reactors were very old technology. Yeah. And everybody knew Fukushima was placed in the wrong location. They knew way ahead of time that that disaster was going to happen. Mm. It was only a matter of time. If constructed properly, and if placed in the right location, nuclear is safe. You believe that? I, 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 I do believe that. Um, so this is an emotional reaction to an accident. That is why people want to remove nuclear, correct? Well, I, I, I would say in Sweden, I mean, the, the politicians have done a little bit of a middle way. I, I, I think what, what Germany is doing that is, is very aggressively shutting down all our nuclear is... is um, Unwise? It's a little bit unwise because they also have such a dependency on coal that also needs to be replaced. And you know, you might want to address coal first before you address nuclear. And it's emotional. In Europe, you have an emotional reaction to nuclear. Yeah. That is, ba I mean, I understand organic food and having an emotional reaction to that, pesticides, GMOs, but this seems to be a really bad emotional decision to get rid of nuclear. You would much rather see it I mean, be I, after coal, like you're saying. I, I, exactly, and, and, and I do think, uh, you know, um, we, we are, uh, we are going to go into a period where power, um, so power in terms of, of, you know, massive solid amount of energy is, is going to be a challenge. Um, so, so, for example, our, our factory is going to need almost 300 megawatts of, of, of constant, uh, constant power. And, and to put that in Germany uh, would be a challenge. It works uh, here uh, because we have so much hydro. Uh, but if we would be relying on solar and wind, it would be super challenging. Yeah, and the impact of battery efficiency 
is going and the decrease in solar cost and wind cost in terms of installation of wind turbines and solar, according to my understanding of it, that combined with batteries is going to accelerate uh, our independence on fossil fuels at a pace that people didn't expect. People didn't expect it, did they? To go this no, fast? No, I, I think uh, I think the, especially the latest year, I think it's been taken by surprise on how fast um, the costs have gone down. But it, but but it's also, I mean, it's a super opportunity. I mean, if you look at India, for example, I mean, India have now put the game plan together where they plan to put in, I think it's like 350 gigawatts of of, of solar. Uh, and, and, and basically to take just a giant leap in industrialization, electrifying the entire country uh, in, in, with a speed that is, is unseen. Uh, so, so the new technology also gives a, a tremendous amount of opportunities. Hey everybody, let me take a moment to thank our friends at LinkedIn for partnering with us here on This Week in Startups. Have you tried to hire somebody lately? It is hard. It's brutally hard. I know. I've got many open positions at inside.com, at launch, trying to grow This Week in Startups and the Angel Podcast. It's hard to hire people. There is a war for talent today in 2017 going into 2018. It's incredibly hard to find great people. And you know the drill. You post to those job boards and you hope that you're going to find the right person. But let me ask you a question. When was the last time you checked a job board? You didn't. You haven't checked a job board in forever. Most people never check job boards, but there is a place where people go daily to grow professionally and communicate with other senior level executives, and that is, of course, LinkedIn, and 70% of the U.S. workforce is there. You know it has the world's largest professional network. We all do, but it's a great way to find talent. Just ask any of the hundreds of thousands of businesses who have posted to LinkedIn Jobs over the past year. Yes, LinkedIn jobs. 22 million professionals view and apply to jobs on LinkedIn every week. Maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't. But I'm telling you right now, 22 million professionals view and apply to jobs on LinkedIn every week. That's week, not year, every week. LinkedIn considered skills, experiences, location, and more to match and promote your job to potential candidates. Think about that. They know your skills. They know your experience. They know your location. So they're matching you with the perfect jobs. That's why 22 million professionals a week are using the uh, jobs boards at LinkedIn. So LinkedIn jobs is 40% higher than job boards at delivering quality candidates. Let me let you have that sink in for a minute. 40% higher than job boards at delivering quality candidates. A biz is only as strong as its people. And every single hire matters. You know that if you listen to this podcast. So don't settle for posting and hoping the right person will find you and your role and apply. No, you want to go to linkedin.com slash twist, linkedin.com slash T-W-I-S-T, and you'll get a $50 credit towards your first job post. $50, 50 smackaroos. That's right, linkedin.com slash twist, linkedin.com slash twist for your $50 credit today. Go ahead and go get that $50 credit. Terms and conditions do apply. Thank you again to our friends at LinkedIn. Let's get back to this amazing episode.